Hello girls and boys, welcome back to Read Me a Story. I'm Pat Kazira, and welcome also to my grandchildren, Max and Theo, Josephine, Charlotte, Penelope, and Simon. This is my book. I'm the author. It's called Tips and Tidbits for Parents and Teachers. So this is for your moms and dads to read, and it will help them to help you at school. It tells them all about the things I've learned in my 50 years in the classroom. But today I'm going to read you a story called Snowflake Bentley. Some of you have never seen snow. So we're going to learn a lot about snowflakes. And at the end, I'm even going to show you how to make your own snowflake. Here we go, Snowflake Bentley. This book has even won the Caldecott Medal. Here we go. In the days when farmers worked with ox and sled and cut the dark with lantern light, there lived a boy who loved snow more than anything else in the world. Wilson Bentley was born February the 9th, 1865 on a farm in Jericho, Vermont between Lake Champlain and Mount Mansfield in the heart of the snow belt where the annual snowfall is about 120 inches. Willie Bentley's happiest days were snowstorm days. He watched snowflakes fall on his mittens, on the dried grass of Vermont farm fields, on the dark metal handle of the barn door. He said snow was as beautiful as butterflies or apple blossoms. He could net butterflies and show them to his older brother Charlie. He could pick apple blossoms and take them to his mother, but he could not share snowflakes because he could not save them. Willie's mother was his teacher until he was 14 years old. He attended school for only a few years. She had a set of encyclopedias, Willie said. I read them all. When his mother gave him an old microscope, he used it to look at flowers, raindrops, and blades of grass. Best of all, he used it to look at snow. While other children built forts and pelted snowballs at roosting crows, Willie was catching single snowflakes. Day after stormy day, he studied the icy crystals. From his boyhood on, he studied all forms of moisture. He kept a record of the weather and he did many experiments with raindrops. He learned that most crystals had six branches, though a few had three. For each snowflake, the six branches were alike. I found that snowflakes were masterpieces of design, he said. No one design was ever repeated. And when a snowflake melted, just that much beauty was gone without leaving any record behind. So snowflakes are like fingerprints, not two alike. Starting at age 15, he drew a hundred snow crystals each winter for three winters. And when he was 16, Willie read, um, read of a camera with its own microscope. If I had that camera, I could photograph snowflakes, he told his mother. Willie's mother knew that he would not be happy until he could share what he had seen. Fussing with snow is just foolishness, his father said. Still, he loved his son. When Willie was 17, his parents spent their savings and they bought the camera. The camera made images on large glass negatives. Its microscope could magnify a tiny crystal from 64 to 3,600 times its actual size. It was taller than a newborn calf and cost as much as his father's herd of 10 cows. Willie was sure 
It was the best of all cameras. Willie's experiment. He used a very small lens opening which let only a little light reach the negative, but he kept the lens open for several seconds, up to a minute and a half. Even so, his first pictures were failures, no better than shadows. Yet, he would not quit. Mistake by mistake, snowflake by snowflake, Willie worked through every storm. Winter ended, the snow melted, and he had no good pictures. He waited for another season of snow. And one day, in the second winter, he tried a new experiment. And it worked! Willie had figured out how to photograph snowflakes. Now everyone can see the great beauty in a tiny crystal, he said. He learned too that he could make the snow crystals show up more clearly by using a sharp knife to cut away all the dark parts of the negative around the crystals. This etching meant extra hours of work for each photograph, but Willie didn't mind. But in those days, no one cared. Neighbors laughed at the idea of photographing snow. Snow in Vermont is as common as dirt, they said. We don't need pictures. Willie said that the photographs would be his gift to the world someday. While other farmers sat by the fire or rode to town with horse and sleigh, Willie studied snowstorms. He stood at the shed door and he held out a black tray to catch the snowflakes. He learned that each snowflake begins as a speck, much too tiny to be seen. Little bits of molecules of water attached to the speck to form its branches. And as the crystal grows, the branches come together and trap small quantities of air. Many things affect the way these crystal branches grow. A little more cold, a bit less wind, or a bit more moisture will mean different shaped branches. Willie said that was why in all his pictures he never found two snowflakes alike. When he found only jumbled broken crystals, he brushed the tray clean with a turkey feather and held it out again. He waited for hours for just the right crystal and didn't notice the cold. If the shed were warm, the snow would melt. If he breathed on the black tray, the snow would melt. If he twitched a muscle as he held the snow crystal on the long wooden pick, the snowflake would break. He had to work fast or the snowflake would evaporate before he could slide it into place and take its picture. Some winters he was able to make only a few dozen good pictures. Some winters he made hundreds. The best snowstorm of his life occurred on Valentine's Day in 1928. He made over a hundred photographs during the two-day storm. He called the storm a gift from King Winter. Willie's nieces and nephews lived on one side of the farmhouse that Willie shared with his brother Charlie. Willie often played the piano as they sang and shared stories and games with them. Willie so loved the beauty of nature, he took pictures in all seasons. In the summer, his nieces and nephews rubbed coat hangers with sticky pitch from spruce trees. Then Willie could use them to pick up spider webs, jeweled with water drops, and take their pictures. On fall nights, he would gently tie a grasshopper to a flower so that he could find it in the morning and photograph the dew-covered insect. But his snowy crystal pictures were always his favorites. He gave copies away or sold them for a few cents. He made special pictures as gifts for birthdays. He held evening slideshows on the lawns of his friends. Children and adults sat on the grass and watched while Willie projected his slides onto a sheet hung over a clothesline. Many colleges and universities bought lantern slide copies of his photographs 
and added to their collections each year. Artists and designers use the photographs to inspire their own work. Even today, those who want to learn about snow crystals begin with Willie Bentley's book, Snow Crystals. He wrote about snow and published his, <coughs> his pictures in magazines. He gave speeches about snow to faraway scholars and neighborhood sky watchers. You are doing a great work, said a professor from Wisconsin. The little farmer came to be known as the world's expert on snow, the snowflake man. But he never grew rich. He spent every penny on his pictures. Well, he said that there were treasures in snow. I can't afford to miss a single snowstorm, he told a friend. I never know when I will find some wonderful prize. Other scientists raised money so that Willie could gather his best photographs in a book. And when he was 60 years old, Willie's book, His Gift to the World, was published. Still, he was not quite ready to quit. By 1926, he had spent $15,000 on his work and he received $4,000 from the sale of photographs and slides. <clears throat> the plaque on, on the, there's a monument built for Willie in the center of town. The girls and boys who had been his neighbors grew up and told their sons and daughters the story of the man who loved snow. Forty years after Willie Bentley's death, children in his village worked to set up a museum in honor of the farmer scientist and his book has taken the delicate snow crystals that once blew across Vermont, past mountains, over the earth. Neighbors and strangers have come to know of the icy wonders that land on their own mittens, thanks to Snowflake uh, Bentley. Now the plaque on the monument says, Snowflake Bentley, Jericho's world famous snowflake authority. For 50 years, Wilson A. Bentley, a simple farmer, developed his technique of microphotography to reveal to the world the grandeur and mister, mystery rather, of the snowflake, its universal hexagonal shape, and its infinite number of lovely designs. And there we have some beautiful pictures of snowflakes. What a wonderful book. And the writer of this book was Jacqueline Brid Briggs Martin. Now girls and boys, you can make your own snowflake at home. All you have to do is have a, a, a square piece of paper like this and you just fold it in half and you fold it in half again and then you fold it from the corner and you fold it like that again and use your scissors to cut little holes or little marks or little indentations or cut the tip off or, or round it. And then when you open it up, you should have a beautiful snowflake. Such fun to make. And you can do that with your scissors. Okay. Girls and boys, we'll see you next time for Read Me a Story. Bye for now.